Hey guys, here we go into a video on Jose Pedraza's fantastic performance and use of his active guard to completely dominate uh, Miko LePierre in the first half of the fight. Now, there was some really weird stuff with the scoring and the replay, um, but I don't want to blame Pedraza for that. I'm not blaming the referee, um, the Nevada State Athletic Commission, or whoever it was, uh, wherever this fight took place. Um, they need to kind of iron that detail out. Um, obviously, it's important that they can go back and fix stuff like that uh, because scoring stuff like that sometimes does have a huge potential to drastically change the outcome of a fight. Um, but maybe they can do that, you know, at the end of the fight, you know, before the scorecards are tallied um, and not during the middle of the fight, you know. But let's not talk about that. Let's talk about Pedraza's amazing performance. Uh, and we're going to be stopping our film study at round two at this 135 mark. Uh, this is as far as we're going to be studying today. Um, however, if you're interested, there will be a full and more comprehensive breakdown on Patreon uh, where I'll be talking about the positions, the front foot, the back foot, all the different ways that Pedraza was able to take advantage. Um, we'll be talking about a little bit higher level of stuff as well, um, in particular the techniques between the jabs, um, the way that they occupy each other's guards, the way that they got around them, um, uh, and more importantly, we'll be talking about uh, the tactics used in the fight um, and the ways that uh, their techniques, right, the way that they punch and the way that they move um, affects the ability for them to follow up and make other attacks. Um, and we'll be talking about that um, front foot and back foot um, styles. Um, but for this film study, we're going to be talking about how Pedraza was able to get around um, Mikkel's lead hand in order to put himself in this position to where he could unload punches um, at will against Mikkel and just dominate him. Um, even though a lot of those punches were blocked or whatever, that's not what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about the boxing. So we got it in slow-mo here, and this is two seconds into the fight. Immediately, Pedraza is going to change positions from the back foot to the front foot and trying to bait this jab as he's able to slide to the other side of it, right, to the outside of Mikkel's uh, guard. Right? This is a very important idea because once you get to this position and you can establish yourself here, this is the position that you'll be throwing your left hooks against the southpaw as well as the position that you'll be moving into to throw your right hands. And as you can see, Pedraza sliding off to the side there. Now coming forward, seeing that jab and that timing coming here, slipping and being able to fight off of Mikkel's jab right off the bat, right? Only 10 seconds into the fight, and now meeting him on the line and looking to change positions, going from his neutral position as he meets Mikkel on the line, slipping to the side and getting off of the line as Mikkel brings his weight into Pedraza. Now he's able to parry this shot because of that timing, because he's already starting to set it up and already starting to slide to the outside and is able to land this straight right hand already. Um, and this is simply because he's going to be using his active guard to be going from the front foot to the back foot to the front foot to the back foot and find a way around the jab of Mikko LePierre. Now, the reason that this is going to be so much more effective is because the jab here comes from a neutral position and it can only be used from this position to attack other neutral positions. As you can see, LePierre, high in his guard and his stance, only able to attack the neutral position of... Um, Pedraza, as Pedraza is able to slip to the outside of that attack and then start landing attacks of his own um, by being able to use the front half of his line and slip off of the neutral part of the line um, into the more dominant part of it. Now, this is a tactic that he used throughout the entire fight, figuring out where that lead hand was, co was going and where the positions that LePierre was going to be able to control with his lead hand um, and being able to get around those zones to alienate and attack LePierre on those jabs, right? And the more often that he's able to do this and slip to the outside, the more he's going to be able to alienate LePierre from his lead hand, pushing him farther and farther to his back foot. Uh, now, the, the problem that LePierre had here was because is that he doesn't actually know how to fight from his back foot. As you can see, when he takes a step back, he's transferring his weight to the back foot, but he's not changing positions. As you can see, his front heel is still on the ground. He's still planted. He hasn't actually changed positions yet um, or formed a strike or, or a positional change in spite of the fact that he's taking that, um, that angle, right? Um, now, again, Pedraza doing a good job of getting around that lead hand, controlling it here, meeting him back on the line, baiting that control from LePierre, 
and moving into an attack, right? Continuing to dominate Le Pierre's lead hand by not only slipping to the outside of it, slipping to the inside of it, jabbing over it, but now he's starting to use his neutral right hand to, to control the space and attack Le Pierre and push him off of his line. Again, making it more and more difficult for Le Pierre to use his lead hand to control the space when Pedraza can slip to the outside of it so easily and counter him. Again, only being uh, this tactic only being made available to him because he's able to slip and use his active guard to get to the outside earlier in the fight so he can more able to disguise this motion um, because of the fact that he's constantly moving from the back foot to the front foot and getting into this position, he's able to disguise that shot as well as shots like these where he's able to move into these positions as well um, and further alienating further alienating uh, Le Pierre from his lead hand. As you can see, Pedraza comes forward um, in the orthodox stance this time, controls the lead hand, and then finds an opportunity to start making attacks on Le Pierre. Now, um, uh, ooh, again, great work from Pedraza leaning in on that same timing here. As Le Pierre comes forward to control the space, he's able to split the guard and move his head to the outside of Le Pierre's lead hand and land that shot. Again, the more that, that Pedraza is able to do this and take away the effectiveness of Le Pierre's jab, the more he's going to be able to push him to the back foot. Now, real quick, I just wanted to point out, whoops, not this clip, but in this clip, in this neutral position, when he shoots this shot, the reason that this is actually an effective shot for him is not because it lands. It's because of the fact that after he throws this punch, he hasn't occupied as much of his line so that he can move off of the line after. This is what makes this, uh, this technique so effective. Um, and this is what we're talking about on my Patreon, is ways to formulate attacks that don't occupy your weight and your line so that you may make attacks and movements after. This is exactly why Jose Pedraza was able to dominate uh, Mikkel, as Mikkel was only able to get on the line with attacks, as you can see here, and then eat punches, not being able to transition and change positions very quick or effectively after. So as you see here, uh, Mikkel using the lead hand to control Pedraza, and he's able to push Pedraza a little bit off of his line as he looks to take his own lead foot dominance and move to the front foot, very similarly to how Pedraza's been doing to him. So as he goes forward, Pedraza actually uses a rounded punch, an overhand right, to attack that front foot zone of Mikkel, uh, Mikkel Le Pierre. This is a tactic that Le Pierre has not been able to use against Pedraza. And now as Le Pierre is trying to get to the front foot, Pedraza is using the correct counter, attacking the correct position with the correct punch, and is able to isolate him from that position. Um, and, you know, as Tim Bradley pointed out, bob and weave and quote unquote confuse Mikko Le Pierre. Now, as you're changing positions and transferring your weight and changing head slots and changing positions, front foot, back foot. You're able to confuse your opponent because of the fact that you're able to force them to technically change positions even though they aren't the ones moving. By changing where your head is around their guard, you can change what power punches they have available to them and make it much more difficult for them to get onto your rhythm and your timing because they have to catch up with their body mechanics to be able to throw the proper punches. So it's not an idea that they're technically confused. It's more the idea that they're not able to transition their body weight and change positions as fast as Pedraza is able to. As you see in these situations, boom. Mikkel's not able to throw a punch here, not able to throw a punch here, and he's found out of position here and not in a position to defend himself from the attacks that Pedraza's putting himself into position for. Now, this clip right here is a really special one because this one demonstrates exactly what it is that um, Mikkel should be doing when he's jabbing and pushing Pedraza off the line. So as you see here, Pedraza is going to use his lead hand to push Mikkel off of his line from that neutral position. Now Mikko moves off the line, right? Very similarly to what uh, Pedraza is doing, moving to the back foot. And then he's going to attempt to move back onto the line with Pedraza. But Pedraza has found himself in this position before Mikko has found himself in a position to counter. So after getting pushed off of his line, Pedraza is able to put himself in this position, 
to meet Mikko back on the line with the right hand as he transfers his weight from the back foot to the front foot, getting his way his weight um, into this attack, but also out of the line of the lead hand that Mikkel is throwing here. Just a beautiful technique here as he's able to do exactly what Mikkel is failing to do. Push him off of the line and then meet him back on the line with his own punch here, right? Very, very, very beautiful technique from Pedraza um, showing um, that he has basically complete control of Le Pierre. Um, and his ability to fight on and off the line, slipping around that lead hand, slipping around that lead hand here, and being able to change positions and make attacks from these positions. As you can see, because Le because Pedraza can get to this front foot so easily, he can threaten Le Pierre with his backhand and not just his lead hand, as he's able to control him and then change positions to defend himself. Notice how... Um, Pedraza is able to use the complete back half of his line to avoid this pull counter from Mikko here. Um, this is a thing. This is an a, this is a um, an ability that Mikko has not really been able to show that he can do is by getting his weight all the way to the back foot. Now, um, uh, if you want to check it out on my Patreon, I will be discussing and doing a full, a much more full and intense breakdown of this particular um, of these particular pull counters um, and the way that Mikko his technical flaws prevented him from being able to land pull counters and being able to show you the differences in uh, Pedraza's technique for how he was able to land his pull counter. Um, so if you're interested in learning how to do pull counters, learning the body mechanics behind them, check out my Patreon. Um, it's 20 bucks a month, uh, 20 bucks to sign up, 20 bucks a month. And there are a lot of fighters who are learning new drills, learning new techniques. Um, so if you're not comfortable sending in your own personal training videos for me to help you with on the Patreon, you can watch other people who send in their Patreons and who are looking to get good, looking to learn to manage their weight, looking to learn to manage their um, their line. Um, and um, yeah, so if you're interested in learning how to do these kinds of things and pull off these kinds of techniques, uh, check it out. Um, anyway, moving on. Uh, round two starts, and they're showing the highlight, but what I want you guys to be looking at is the left corner. We're not looking at the highlight. We already saw that stuff, but as we can see, Le Pierre is, again, trying to control the distance and control the space, um, but he's having a very difficult time alienating Pedraza from the front foot and the back foot, so Pedraza is easily able to move into these positions, moving onto the front foot, and make attacks and continue pushing Le Pierre off of his line. As you can see, he's able to make these attacks and then get off the line before Le Pierre can make a counter, right? And this has to do with his superior technique, his superior fundamentals, um, and his overall um, better body mechanics and ability to manage and control his weight. Um, now, again, because of the fact that he's having so much success splitting the line and getting to the front foot and Le Pierre cannot stop him with his lead hand but also Le Pierre is not able to follow up on his lead hand as you can see here he's pushed Pedraza off of the front or off of the, the center line and pushed Pedraza onto his front foot now Pedraza is going to bring his weight back up to the line and look to make an attack against against um, Le Pierre as he meets him on the line with that right hand now Again, Le Pierre is having a very difficult time shooting a line or shooting a jab that's able to split his opponent's line and then make a follow-up attack. Again, this is because he has a very difficult time managing his weight and distributing his weight so that he can change positions quick enough to fight Pedraza. Um, and as you can see, he's not able to do that, and Pedraza is able to use that line-splitting technique that uh, Le Pierre is using to push him off the line and control the space to start making attacks and continue isolating Le Pierre from his line, not effectively allowing Le Pierre to isolate Pedraza from his line, right? As you can see, Pedraza has no problem continuing to move from the front foot to the back foot, changing positions from the back foot to the front foot, crossing Le Pierre's line and landing attacks at will. Now, the more this goes on, and he continues to meet him on the line and cross the line and control that lead hand and land attacks, uh, the less confident that Le Pierre is going to feel that he has control of that lead foot and control of the space between him and Pedraza. Now, after Pedraza has 
controlled him and landed enough punches and pushed LePierre off of his line enough, right? And this is a problem with uh, LePierre not being able to use the back half of his line. As he comes forward, if LePierre needs to get away from him, he needs to continue using and pivoting off of his back foot. But because LePierre doesn't actually use the back half of his line very well, he doesn't get his way to the back half of his line. As Pedraza pushes him forward or pushes him back, LePierre can only bring his weight forward into Pedraza, right? And Pedraza is waiting for him there and is able to completely capitalize. And that's where we find ourselves in this position um, with Pedraza being able to push him off of his line enough and stop him from being able to defend himself enough that he can land this flurry. Now, to be honest, it was a beautiful um, um, performance from Pedraza. I'll just play the video here. Um, how he's able to get around uh, LePierre's lead hand and dominate that lead hand and dominate the positions. Notice that LePierre fights basically off of the off of the back half of his line throughout the most most of the course of the fight and most of the course of these clips, but he's not actually getting all of his weight to the back foot. As you can see here, when he eats this right hand, right, in the in the left hand clip, right, the small clip, he's not getting his weight all the way to the back foot. His front foot is not turning in. He's not transferring his weight to the back foot. And this stops him from being able to explode and bring his weight from the back foot to the front foot in an attack which means that he's completely, basically, out of position throughout the course of most of the fight because of the fact that he doesn't have a way to use the back half of his line. Um, and Pedraza is able to dominate him. Now, um, like I said, uh, that's all we're going to talk about here on, uh, on YouTube. But if you guys are interested, I'm going to be doing a much more uh, full and comprehensive breakdown of this fight and these positions and how Pedraza was able to dominate him, uh, not just with the lead hand control and being able to get around the lead hand and dominating his lead hand, um, but more in particular, the positions and how these positions were effective in neutralizing LePierre's, not only his offense, but his defense. Um, and we will talk about a little bit of the later rounds as well. We'll be watching those as Pedraza kind of slowed down, uh, likely because of all the lulls in the fight and you know whatever was going on with him. Um, but this was a fantastic performance from him. He dominated a pretty solid fighter who's very, very dangerous, who a lot of fighters probably wouldn't even want to fight. Um, but anyway, um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to check out my Patreon. And um, uh, yeah, also, um, I'm also going to be doing a new video series, uh, The Mechanics of a Punch, where we're going to be going through and teaching people, uh, teaching you guys how to use... Well, not how to use the jab. That's what Patreon's for. Um, but how to throw a correct jab, correct right hand, correct left hook, um, and the mechanics of all these kinds of punches. Um, and then if you're interested, you can check out Patreon to learn how to chain those motions and chain those weight transitions together, um, which is what Pedraza was able to do throughout the course of this fight, is use his active guard, use his front and back foot, um, and his ability to, to throw and make these motions and put himself in these positions and then chain them together. Um, and that's the biggest problem that Le Pierre had. It's not that he couldn't put himself in these positions. It's that he wasn't very good at getting into the front foot or getting into the back foot without punches, which means that he's not going to be able to get out of those positions without punches as well. Um, so just very, very far behind in his technique. But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my Patreon. And uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks, guys.